deserve my it. What's going on guys? It's your boy Elisha here and welcome back to Gaul. Welcome back to our brand new segment once again called Gaul Reactions where we go on the internet and react to different things in the world of football. Internet, TV stuff, whatever's in football, we're going to react to it right here on Gaul Reactions and this episode yet again is brought to you and sponsored by One Football. So make sure you go and download the One Football app. Link in the description below. So we're gonna go down on the One Football app right now, actually, and react to different news in football, current things that have been going on this weekend. I have a feeling I know some stuff is gonna be on there, but without further ado, let's get right to it. Let's react to it right now. Mmm, that's some good chocolate. Cadbury, Royal Dark, it's fire. All right, so let's go on the app right now. We're on the app, and first and foremost, fans, we're gonna get straight into it. We're gonna straight into it, no wasting time. Let's see what's going on, man. Fans are finally back at Old Trafford and in full voice. Let's actually click on this article. This is super interesting. A lot of people, I think, have gotten so used to the fact that we're in a pandemic and no fans and all of that stuff. It's like, the more these news are coming out that people are coming back to the stadium, more it's like, oh, snap, like, We've been so used to this and wearing masks and social distancing and all of that stuff that it's like, yo, whenever this news pops up, I'm like, oh, we dead in the pandemic, bro. It's crazy. But anyways, it's been 436 days since fans were at Old Trafford preparing to watch Manchester United play. That all changes today with 10,000 of them expected to be present for the Premier League clash against Fulham. Now, look, I want the fans to be back in the stadium as much as possible. I'm just saying, though, to me, it's like if if the CDC or the World Health Organization is gonna push out for these vaccines and all of these precautions and stuff, bro, like, I doubt all 10,000 fans are gonna be vaccinated. So, if y'all not gonna check for that, then what's the point of having 10,000 people all at one place anyways? Like, I, I don't get it. I'm not really understanding it, but do you, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's your stadium, it's your people's, United, okay? If you wanna let them in there and risk that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do your thing. All right, on to the next. Klopp, never in doubt over Salah's commitment to Liverpool. I'm not even gonna read too much into this. Let's go back because to be honest, yo, I don't, like, why would Salah even wanna live Liverpool? The fans, the fans love him. The team loves him, obviously. He's done a lot of great things over the years since he's been back to the Premier League. Like, he, I don't even know why that's even a question. Sometimes I feel like they just ask questions just to ask. Like, there's no doubt over Salah's loyalty to Liverpool or whether he's leaving or not. Like, where would he go? Why would he go anywhere else? Like, two Champions League finals in three years. He's won one. He's won the, the Premier League with them. Like, bro, come on, stop playing, bro. Salah ain't leaving Liverpool. It's like saying Mane or something. They're not leaving. Report, Laporta has promised Messi a 10-year contract. Let's click on this. Okay, with the date of expiry on Le expiry, oh, expiry. Messi's contract is coming to expiry. I'm drinking Monster so I can get some energy. And this song is sounding a bit like a melody. I'm not gonna give y'all too much. I'm not gonna give y'all too much. It's good, it's good. It's, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. But Messi's current deal with Barcelona looming ominously close. There is more speculation than ever regarding the nature of the offer of the club president, John Laporta, will table for the Argentine. Um, given that, one of which includes the president's offer of giving the 33-year-old a 10-year long contract. Again, in that same sentence, you, you mentioned that Messi is 33 years old. Messi ain't staying at Barcelona until 43. I don't, I, don't, I don't care how Tom Brady and LeBron and Cristiano could do whatever. I don't see Lionel, Barnabas, Cornelius Messi staying at Barcelona until he's, he's 43. That's not happening. By that time, he could have stopped playing and became a manager. Like, that's, that's not happening. But if you like it, I love it. Scroll down a little bit. He didn't effectively earn a total amount similar to his current contract over the course of the 10 years. A lot of crucial business is set to follow for Barcelona after the final game of La Liga season. Which, again, let's talk about this stuff. The fact that Messi asked for, of course, a new set 
of leaders at Barcelona, which he's gotten, of course, because he's he's messy and it's not just messy. Obviously, there were a lot of problems at the club in the organization overall. So they had to go. All right, they just Bartomeu and them, they, they got to go. All right, and they went. La Porta comes in now trying to do his best to keep Messi happy. It's stupid to, not stupid on his part, but look at how Suarez, and maybe we're gonna see this news too, but we'll talk about it now. Suarez got let go supposedly because he was too old, and now Aguero is joining Barcelona. He's the same age. So it's, it's like, bro, that organization definitely had to have their regime change, so it's good. But the fact that now Barcelona are on their last stretch, final games of La Liga, and they're supposed to be winning every single game to have that shot at winning this trophy this season. And they've lost, like how many, they've, they've lost the game, drawn two of their last week, like, bro. When they're supposed to be performing at their highest level and really pushing for it, they're waiting for, for Atletico or Real to slip up, they losing and drawing games. Get out my face with that, bro. Anyways, I don't know why. Messi obviously is comfortable at Barcelona. And as a Barca fan, of course, I don't want him. I don't want him to. I don't want to see him go. But as a player, I would be like, like, bro, come on. Like, it's looking like God is saying, like, it's looking like God is saying, bro, you gotta go. Like, so why you keep staying? You know, I'm telling you, and all the signs are showing up. Go, Messi. But you staying. But anyways, Premier League revealed two new Hall of Fame inductees. I think I saw this. Eric Cantona had to be one of them actually, but this is dope. I love this whole Hall of Fame thing that they're doing. I think they should be for every single league. Like, I love it. The NBA has it. The NFL has it. I, I, this, I love the whole, you know, idea of the Hall of Fame. Although, I do think like anything else, like any other award, there's still just people determining these things. There's always people who get snubbed though. So it's like, eh. You know, like, who's really deciding these things? But so far, they've gotten them right. Terry Henry has been in it. Um, Roy Keane and Eric Cantona. Yes, I did see that one. And so, yeah, those are definitely some great choices. I think Alan Shearer also was an inductee. So, so far, good choices. No problems there. Um, I hope that, you know, it continues to progress and that it... it it highlights the greatness of some of the Premier League's best players ever. You know, I know some guys now who are definitely are going to be future Hall of Famers. Aguero is going to be a Hall of Famer. And Golo Kante is definitely going to be, to name a few. But De Bruyne, like, there's, there's so many. And again, if it's fair, and if the people who are deciding these, these inductees are, they know what they're saying, they're not biased, then this should be a great thing for football. I'm all for it. Shout out to the Hall of Fame. Put me in the Hall of Fame for soccer content creators. I'm trying to be on that. I'm trying to be the GOAT. <laughs> Next up, I see this news and it, and it made me smile. It made me smile. I'm not, I, I, on the inside, I don't know if I was smiling on the outside, but on the inside, it definitely made me smile. Karim Benzema in line for France recall ahead of Euro 2020. Well, Euro 2021, technically, but like you get it, you get it. Pandemic, Corona. Uh. Anyways, this 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 is good. I really like this. I really like this news. I really like that Benzema is actually like like it's looking like he's gonna make a return in the French national team. Sucks that all this drama and stuff has happened over the year. He missed out on the World Cup. He would have been a starter in that World Cup squad and would have been a world champion by now. It, it, it's it, you know it's crazy, but life happens. You know you make mistakes and there's feuds or whatever. But if Didier Deschamps is ready to bring him back right now, then I think that you know maybe the the, the hatchet could be buried and there could be some reconciliation and he can still win some trophies for France. You know um, there's some there's some tough teams in Europe to beat though. The Netherlands coming up. England has a young squad that's crazy right now. Germany, Spain. So it's gonna be tough for sure. It's not just saying. Benzema coming back is gonna automatically reassure that France are gonna win everything. But I'm definitely, I'm definitely seeing that it's 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 gonna make a difference, and I'm happy that he's he's set to make a return. And I hope it happens. Now I'm not gonna lie. If you're superstitious, then you're gonna look at the women's final as maybe a preview for the men's final and be like, ah, oh, Chelsea might be in trouble. At the end of the day, it was you know yeah same club or whatever, but obviously completely different set of players. 
But the confidence going into this with Chelsea overall having two teams in the final, it's like, yo, that club, the club overall is doing amazing, right? And then you go and lose 4 0 in the final, and it's like, I don't know. If you're superstitious, if you're a superstitious Chelsea fan, if you're, if you're a superstitious Chelsea fan, then you might be shaking in your boots right now. And uh, I don't know. Fournel is tough. Tough luck for Chelsea, man. But congratulations to Barcelona's women for getting that trophy and getting one Champions League trophy for their club overall. No shade. Ain't no shade at all, Barca. <laughs> And to end this off, actually, let's go into some transfer, the transfer section of the OneFootball app and see what the people have been talking about. Daniel Diva, Gabriel Jesus, rumor, Gabriel Jesus to Tottenham. I don't see that happening. Why? Like, why would, why would you, ugh. Um, Memphis Depay, this is actually very probable, especially since Coleman is um, Dutch, just like Memphis. And apparently that's part of the deal that if he comes on the team, Coleman has to stay. But at the end of the day, he's a talented player. You know, I would like to see him get another shot at a higher level league like La Liga and see if he could really perform. But yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait for that. We got two red dots for now. Icardi to Roma, not gonna happen. Icardi to AC Milan, I don't think that's gonna happen either. I think Icardi's comfortable at PSG too and he's gonna stay. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much gonna be it for this episode of Goal Reactions. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was brought to you by OneFootball. Again, don't forget to download the OneFootball app. And guys, let me know if there are specific things that you would like for us to include in Goal Reactions to react to. Make sure you let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget, guys, to also like the video, share it with your grandma, your grandpa, your mommy, your pappy, your uncle, cousins, dogs, neighbors, pets, snakes, hamster. Share it with everybody you know. Make sure you subscribe to the Gold Channel, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.